Two watches that commonly get praise in the under $500 mechanical watch tier has to be Seiko Cocktail Time and the Orient Bambino. And often, in addition to that, they get paired against one another and competing against one another for your dollars. Which one should you go for? Well, in this video, we're gonna try to answer that question by putting them head to head. So if you're not familiar with this style of video, this is not something where we're going to do a deep dive review on these pieces. We have videos that are like that, independently looking at these watches. What we're instead going to do is have these watches go through a list of different categories and points and considerations that I think a buyer would have, and then have a point for each one of the categories that a watch wins. So how this will work, we'll go through a category, decide on a winner. If we can't decide a winner, it'll be a tie. Each one of those, whether they win it or it's a tie, we'll get a point. And then at the end, what we'll do is we'll go through, tally up the total score for each of the watches and then share some final considerations because as much as it is nice to be able to look at the kind of these categories, who wins in each one of these categories, watch buying is not as simple as just what wins in a point system. There's some nuance to this. So we'll talk about other considerations as well. Also, if you're in the market for Seiko and Orient, we are an authorized dealer on teddybaldesser.com for both of the brands. Both of the collections are hand curated by myself. So if you wanna get lost and beyond just what we're gonna be talking about here today, I recommend it in the description down below. How we're able to fund these productions as well and keep content going on this channel is through selling watches on our site. It's not by brands paying us to make content. I prefer it this way. And it allows me to talk about watches how I wanna talk about them. So it just works out way better for us and I think for you guys as well. So if you're on the market, we'd love to have your business. Now for our first category here, we have wearability. So we have around 10 categories. Wearability is more speaking to uh, how does the watch wear on the wrist? Now, this is now an equation that expands beyond just a singular case because both of these collections are vast, both in styling, but also case size. When looking at the different case sizes for the cocktail time family, there's quite a bit. You have a 33.8 millimeter, a 38.5 millimeter, a 39.5 millimeter, less frequent, but it is out there, and then a 40.5 millimeter. If you're opening everything up to the JDM as well as uh, looking at stuff that's available in the US market where I'm from, and then for the Bambino, you have 36, 38, and then a 40.5 millimeter. So with this being the case, you do have more options for Seiko than you do the Bambino. Both of them offer a vast amount of watches in different sizes that I think everyone's gonna be covered generally. One thing I will also mention is some of the Seiko watches will be thinner on the wrist in comparison, depending on which one you're going to look for. So in general, I think you have to give a slight edge to Seiko here, but generally I think this is one of the reasons why both of these watches excel. So many to choose from, and also from a wearability standpoint, I think they're pretty in line with the mass market and what could work for a wide variety of wrists. Next we have case and dial finish. When it comes to case finish, I think both of them are in the same ballpark generally. When it comes to dial, even though there are many different dials to choose from from the Bambino collection, you have to give the edge to the cocktail time. And this is no fault to the Bambino. I just think the Seiko punch is way above their weight. There's one thing that Seiko does exceptionally well from their Presage collection under $1,000. is just delivering some of the most interesting, visually appealing dials out there, period. This is probably one of the flagships under $500. When you're talking about the cocktail time, this rib finish, even the raised elements of the indices, as well as the Seiko logo on some of these watches, it just looks fantastic. It has more three dimensionality to it. And even if you put this up against something that was say double the price of it, it still would probably win out against most watches that you would put up against it. It's simply that good. And it's one of those watches when you handle for the first time, even if somebody's not into watches and you tell them like, hey, you can get this for around like $400 and they get to handle it. And they're just like, okay, I can see why you're into this stuff. And I think that's a pretty powerful thing. So Seiko, clear winner here for case and dial finish. Next we have versatility. So this is the idea of how easy is it to pull it off in a wide variety of environments. And for this one, I'm just gonna give it a tie. Both our broad model families have options that are incredibly versatile, moving from easily the dressier scenarios to more casual settings, depending on the strap option chosen and the dial option chosen. So I'm just gonna say tie here, both are very good. So next up we have water resistance and neither of these watches are going to be ones that you're going to be reaching for when you're doing your next diving expedition, but Seiko does get a slight edge here. 50 meters versus 30 meters, is this going to create anything huge in practice that you're going to be able to feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Absolutely not. However, it is nice to have a little extra peace of mind if we're talking about just matter of fact point of who wins in water resistance, you have to give the edge to Seiko. For our next category, we have movements. And for some of you, it might come as a surprise when I say the winner here, but for others that have been watching the channel for a while, maybe not so much so, 
And the winner here is Orient. So both anecdotally speaking, as well as when looking at just the range of deviation that is stated by both the manufacturers, Orient wins when it comes to what they're delivering from a movement standpoint, from an accuracy standpoint more specifically. Both of these are going to have proprietary manufacturer calibers on the inside. What you'll find from Seiko are going to be those four R series of movements, 21,600 vibrations per hour, three Hertz, hacking hand winding, power reserve of 40 hours. But the accuracy rating is going to be from minus 35 to plus 45 seconds a day. In comparison, Orient matches them across the board, beat frequency, hacking, hand winding, power reserve, but the accuracy range quoted from the manufacturer is minus 15 to plus 25 seconds a day. In addition to that, if somebody's handled hundreds, thousands of Orient watches now, uh, just find them more consistently running in single digits than some of the Seiko counterparts. I think they just take regulation a little bit more seriously. It's a little weird. Now this is just speaking anecdotally here. Don't take this to the bank, but you also look at the range of deviation specified by the manufacturer in addition to just some anecdotal evidence. I think I have to give the edge to Orient here. For straps, they're both trash. So I think I'm gonna have to just give this one a tie. I will throw it out there that the bracelet on some of the cocktail times is not bad. So that could also be thrown in there, but none of them are exceptional. So I don't know if I could really give an edge to either of these. I'll just say it's a tie here. For optionality, so this is just the amount of variety of watches that you have within these collections to choose from. Now, I did not number every single one of these. You probably could figure out which one truly does have more optionality, but it reaches a number that becomes so high from both of these where I'm like, okay, enough is enough. They're both very good. Case size, dial color, it's all there, both of the collections. If you have a desired type of look, uh, I will say that the Orin Bambino has a bit more of a variation between its dials compared to the cocktail time, more in just the layout. But for the cocktail time, you are getting some different colors and more pops that way. So they just differentiate in different ways. It's a tie. For crystal, both of them are going to be coming with mineral glass. So I would say this is also going to be a tie. Maybe some could make the argument about because the Bambinos are typically priced much lower than the cocktail times that they get the edge automatically. But you could probably say that for almost every category here. So I don't think that's fair. Let's just stick to the specific category itself. Crystals both being mineral, going to show some scratches, probably not ideal. Not having sapphire might be an issue for some, but going to give these two a tie as well here. I did wanna throw this as a category in here because I think it is important to consider, at least think about when talking about matching up both of these brands, and that is Heritage. Seiko is going to get the win here. Seiko is older than Orient, having been founded in 1881 as opposed to 1901 for Orient. But Seiko also has simply just more important developments for watch history, with numerous iconic model families dating back to the middle of the 20th century, both looking at field watches, dive watches, chronographs, they've really done it all. Orient's appeal is especially for the enthusiast community, newer and largely related to the Bambino, models like the Kamasu, the Mako family. So more of a newfound popularity for Orient in comparison. Also, when considering just the ownership structure, it's a little bit of a weird mess at times when trying to unpack how this all works, but Seiko Epson Corporation owns Orient. And then we have Seiko as well as its own entities. So in terms of just the hierarchy of brands importance too, giving Seiko the edge. And finally, we have price, easy win here for Orient. That is partially why it's built such a reputation as being this amazing value proposition under $500 for mechanical watches. It's actually closer to $200 for most of their watches, if not less. And then for the cocktail times, those are landing closer to around $400. So you are talking about double the price. Now going from 200 to 400 is a lot different than going from 500 to 1000, just from a price difference standpoint. And as it continues to ascend, that becomes more of the case, but it is still double the price. So we've gone through all of our categories now, what is the final tally? For Orient, it came away with six points, and for the Seiko Cocktail Time, came away with eight total points. So the Seiko Cocktail Time absolutely wins. That's the better watch. Well, it's never that easy, is it? One thing I will say, when looking at the distribution of points, not all points are equal, despite I make the rules here, I did say they're all equal with one point each. One thing I will consider is just the fact that Orient wins on price. It's also right there when it comes to wearability, but also the movement. If you value just dollar amount and what you can get for the money while still having great flexibility on wear and a better movement, or at least from an accuracy standpoint, a better movement, then 
the Bambino might be compelling and you are saving half the money. So it is a point where if it wins sizably under price, is that jump worth it for you? I think for the cocktail time where it shines, it has a bit more of its own identity. The Bambino is safe, but that's by intention. It's more to just be that nice gateway, entry level mechanical watch where the cocktail time, even the just design language, emulating cocktails with these different dials, that whole story is a little more evolved. The rib finish and the finishing on the dial is a bit more elevated. That's more of what you're paying for there. And I think when you get the product in hands, you'll notice that there is a little bit more of a model DNA that you're getting here. But it's just so hard to beat the price positioning of the Bambino. I think that's why it's able to succeed. So if I had to sum this up, which one to go for, if you just want the best bang for buck when you're talking about just having your money going the farthest, when you're looking at the movement, wearability, and just getting the best watch you possibly can for the money, the Orient Bambino from a dress watch perspective is probably that. But if you have a little bit more money to spend and you have a more sense of your taste and what you like, I think the cocktail time has a bit more of its own identity. It's not as generic as the Bambino and that's no fault of the Bambino. It's doing what it's intended to do and that's just be a no nonsense dress watch for the category. Cocktail time with its imagery, its different dials, as well as its finishing, does feel a bit more elevated, but you're also paying for it in the process. And you're also getting a brand in Seiko that of course doesn't need any further introduction. And it is Seiko. It's one of the most known brands in the world of mechanical watchmaking with contributions to watchmaking that is longer than almost any other brand out there. So a very tough choice, but what watch would you go for? As somebody that maybe had to make this decision, I think both of these watches are absolutely gateway watches in the world of mechanical watchmaking. And I don't really think you could go wrong with either. They just have different angles and lanes that you could go with uh, when looking at them. And that's kind of how I would separate them when looking at the two pieces. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also, again, I really would appreciate any comments down below from owners who made this decision for themselves and just how they're feeling about their decision and what really were the other factors that they considered. Definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, full factor warranty for all the products that we offer. Guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.